just want to come on video and uh, talk about the um, sad death of Ian Tomlinson. Um, for the international viewers who don't happen to be in Britain, there are a few links in the description box below as to who this protester was, what happened to him. Um, he was a protester at the G20 in London in 2009, I believe it was April, and he got um, violently pushed over by a policeman with a shield and uh, subsequently from the injuries of hitting the ground he passed away. There are many videos, I don't know how many, 10 or so, um, doing the rounds on YouTube about um, Charlie Veach tells tall tales about the death of Ian Tomlinson or uh, my favorite ones, the Charlie Veach agent confirmed or government agent or alerts, the breaking news, he's an agent, he's a shill, he's a sellout. And um, look, coming back to seriousness, like a man died that day and um, I witnessed with my own eyes a man that I had just spoken to a few minutes ago um, die. And let's, let's just pause here so everyone just lean in and let's tell the truth about what happened that day because I am bemused by the levels of um, irrationality and hysteria and um, blinkered thinking that goes on in um, people who claim to want a better, more loving world. And um, there's a, a lot of psychology which should be explored in terms of um, the, the very few people, but just how fevered and how angry they are at me for um, doing what I do, for making my films, for reaching thousands of people. And um, I just want to say thank you to all the positive viewers who leave nice comments or like the videos. And um, obviously the people who donate, um, I couldn't do this without you. So there is a massive amount of support for what I do around the world, which is why I carry on doing what I do. And for you guys, thank you. You guys and girls, thank you very much. So let's rewind back to April 2009. Well, actually, no, first of all, let's um, discuss uh, some of the videos in the description box. There's um, me, um, someone recorded this off the BBC, and this was a lunchtime around April, um, a few days after the G20 protests, and um, I heard so many um, news reporters um, just basically telling an untruth, uh, not lies, because I think in the fog of war and protests and activism, it all gets lost, and you've got party politics and people with a a kind of agenda to push. So the agenda of um, people who were, you know, angry towards the police was um, that um, Ian Tomlinson was a, just someone walking past. He had absolutely nothing to do with the protest. And I heard all these people doing this, which I thought, this is wrong. This is not actually true. I was there. I spoke to him minutes before he died. So this is the truth. So I, I interrupted some news crews and there was a BBC one going out live um, at one o'clock news. So um, I, I was in my suit, I was still working in finance, and um, I said, look, I, I was there, I spoke to him. So um, I hate to say this to all the haters, but um, everything I said in that interview, um, you know, the chubby guy in the suit with a tie and shirt, um, was true. Um, yes, I went about it in a slightly insensitive way, but um, that was a, a kind of um, direct kind of reflection of how many untruths were being told in the media. The story in the media was that this was a newspaper vendor who was on his way home from work and happened to accidentally stumble through um, the financial district of London and uh, happened to accidentally walk into a massive confrontation between hundreds of um, armoured police and dogs and uh, protesters. The fact is I got there a bit late because um, I was working that day. Um, it was a weekday, I believe, in London. And um, so I cycled in from my flat in East London. And I got to the protest, it was around Bank Tube Station, which was where the Bank of England is. And we're down a little side alley. And I've got megaphone and bicycle. And I'd borrowed a megaphone from my friend, um, Ollie, Ollie the Octopus, who was in some of the earlier videos of the Love Police. And um, I didn't know what I was doing. I still had allegiances in the finance world and I had allegiances since, I, since I've been the little boy of activism, of wanting change. So it was kind of like, I went along to heckle both the protesters and the police. I wasn't taking sides. I was truly just going there to make fun of both sides. And um, here's the truth, guys. Like, here is the absolute truth. Ian Tomlinson um, wasn't there um, just by accident. He was there like the rest of us were to take part in the protest, to you know, confront the globalization, to um, confront the police. 
And um, I was down an alleyway, I was maybe playing with my phone or getting the megaphone ready. And um, this just shows you how weird life is. I mean, the guy who then went on to do The Love Police was, if not the last, one of the very last people this famous death spoke to before he got killed by the police. And no one will deny that the policeman was overly aggressive in violently smashing him over. I mean, he had his back turned, he was walking away. How did he pose any threat to that police line? He did not. But let's give what happened that day some context because it's all about the context so that you know. Truth is very important, not party politics, not cult mentality, not thinking that we need to have these myths which maybe are not so true but because it's against our enemies, let's hold them. No, to me, the truth is what I'm here for. I am here to try and become a very self-aware human being and part of that is respecting this thing called the truth. And I think it's an utter bastardization of the concept of truth that we have a movement, which is in fact more like a religion or a cult, calling itself the truth movement. It's not interested in the truth, it's interested in hysteria, its own party agenda, and anyone that strays from that party agenda to try and find, oh, um, real truth is ostracized. But we know how conspiracies work. If you don't agree with a conspiracy, if you think it might be bullshit, you're part of it. You're the agent. You're the cover-up. You're the shill. <sighs> yeah, so there I was playing with my phone and uh, this man comes up to me and um, yeah, it was Ian Tomlinson. I gave a statement to the IPCC, the Independent Police Complaints Commission. Uh, whether they're fair or impartial, that's a completely different story. But I felt at the time, as a finance worker, I had to give a statement to the Police Complaints Commission. Because the truth is important. And one thing, all the haters and all the makers of these, let's be honest, irrational, non-compassionate, stupid videos um, in trying to attack me, um, what they're doing is just basically doing a disservice to what actually happened. And that's fair enough. You guys can call me a liar. If you think I'm looking in the camera lens now and lying, that's fine. You think that. But the fact remains is that there's thousands of people around the world that don't think I'm lying, that watch my videos and enjoy them and understand what I'm trying to do. So for them, you know, like, if I get a bit worked up and aggressive, it's not against you guys, the good viewers. It's against them. Um, the irrational kind of bu cowardly bullies who hide in the shadows and I'm like, I get so much abuse and um, there's a line from a video game, uh, Deus Ex Machina, or I, I can't pronounce it. Um, looks like a good video game, I don't have that time to play it, but um, the great line which I remembered. If you want to make enemies, try and change something, try and believe in something. And um, I've made so many enemies of people who seem incapable of um, challenging me in the street, of speaking to me one-on-one. -on -one. And the few times, I, I've mentioned this before, but the few times I have tried to like bring in a hater who's like shouting abuse at me across the street when I'm out filming and megaphoning with friends, it's like, no, come over, come over. I want to speak to you. I want to know what you have to think. And they run away. This guy's like covering his face and running away. And another one I had, and this is um, quite funny. I was giving a talk at... Um, the occupied school, which got demolished the next day, about freedom and anarchy, and oh, it was called the spirituality of anarchy. I did a promo video for it where we smashed the megaphone in the street. It's quite funny, and um, this is this shows you the kind of level of intelligence and um, irrationality. I'm halfway through my presentation, and it's getting very emotional. I'm talking about bullying and how I got bullied as a kid, and it kind of plays into why I do what I do with the Love Police. It is a kind of subconscious wish to. Um, rub truth in the bully's face and say, well, you know, you bullied me and uh, here I am following my dreams making films like I always wanted to do. And um, putting forward a moral message which I believe in and um, has reached thousands of people around the world. So yeah, anyway, this guy sat there and he interrupts the, the presentation that my friend was filming and I was talking. And in front of everyone, this is the level of his reason. He screams out, Charlie Veach, we're on to you. Your name is an anagram of Evil Rich Cheat. Charlie Veach, Evil Rich Cheat. Correct. That's true. Um, what that is evidence of, except um, the movability of letters to create new words, I'm not sure. But um, I guess the implication was is that my parents in 1979, when I was conceived, um, I guess had to plan my name 
Um, they had to think about the, the formal name, Charles, and how it could be shortened to Veach. And they had to think, yeah, one day he will be this Agent MI6 Mossad reptilian fucking double agent shill. Sorry, triple agent shill. Who would, um, because the Matrix is so powerful, be an evil rich cheat. I'm not rich. I'm not cheating. And I'm not evil. It's just nonsense. Anyway, back to Ian Tomlinson. But I just wanted to give you a level. Anyway, this guy, evil rich cheat. So I said, no, come forward. Like, I'm happy for you to sit with me at the front. And the people that were there can vouch for me that I, I invited them to come forward and have a debate. What did he do? He storms up and storms out while swearing at me. And the funny thing is, is that when you give someone this level of irrational abuse, um, the public ends up having more sympathy for me. The, the 40 or 50 people that were there, I don't draw big crowds, um, the, but the 40 or 50 people that were there um, were like, oh my God, poor guy, Charlie. This is the shit he has to put up with, the shit from these irrational idiots. But that's fine. I've managed to um, kind of, you know, come to terms with it. It is still frustrating because they're human beings. I'm a human being. We're all in this adventure together. And when there's like, child rape, when there's corruption, when there's people in banks burning 50 pound notes in front of tramps as a kind of initiation ceremony to the Bullingdon Club, which our finance minister and our prime minister are members or were members of, when weapons get sold, when pharmaceutical drugs get pushed onto children, yet, despite all this, it's worthwhile of their time to attack me. And um, I would love it. I would love it because I'm often out in central Manchester. I'm, I go down to London every now and again. And I would love it if the haters had the balls. The balls. You don't have balls. You need balls. You know, big fucking balls. And this is what I think they mistake for evidence of agents, you know, because I have big balls, but only because I am a bit cuckoo. And so I don't actually have that level of fear that some people have, which prevents them going out and doing activism or megaphoning or sticking a camera in someone's face and proving a point. But the lack of balls, the difference between an anonymous online hater and a real bully in real life is that at least the real bully will look you in the eye before he pushes you down into the mud. The anonymous online bully doesn't even have that. He is pixels. He is binary. He, is, he or she is nobody. Anyway, where were we? This is fucking hell. 12 minutes, 42 seconds. Um, I've got to get this down to a fucking T, man. Anyway, so back to Ian Tomlinson. Look, respect to the guy's family. He did not deserve to die. The policeman, which pushed him over for the whole planet to see, acted like an aggressive, bullying asshole. I'm not taking sides with the police. I'm taking sides with the truth. Something which the truth movement has never done. So... I spoke to Ian Tomlinson a few moments before he died, and um, this is what he said to me. I started chatting to him, he saw I had a megaphone, so he came up and there was a bit of small talk about the megaphone. And these are some direct quotes from Ian Tomlinson, because I spoke to him, and he goes, whoa, 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 I've been fighting the police all morning, I've been running through the streets with the police, end quote. And I noticed this guy, Ian Tomlinson, there was a strong smell of alcohol on his breath. And he had that wild-eyed look, which is why in the BBC interview, I said he was intoxicated. Because he was. We've all drunk alcohol. We all know what alcohol smells like. We've all been drunk. We can recognize it in another human being. And so, Ian Tomlinson then scurried off, drunk and happy and fighting the police. And that footage you see of him, where there's a long line of police behind him with dogs and riot shields. And he's walking down with his hands in his pockets. On the surface, that looks like a man who is walking with his hands in his pockets innocently through the street, which is the look he was going for. But it was mocking the police, which is he, he is allowed to do. It's a free country. A free country. So he was like, yeah, motherfuckers, yeah, motherfuckers, I'm not going to fucking move. The police were like blaring, get the fuck out, get the fuck out. The dogs were... And Ian Tomlinson, fair play to him, was mocking the police, mocking them. And he did. And um, he paid with his life. And um, the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, a protester, a protester who had been drinking, got killed by the police aggressively. 
and the media, because the media wants to create division and create hysteria and create hatred at the police. And there's a lot of reasons to hate the police. But there's a lot of reasons to also respect the fact that there are good people in the police force. Yes, they put on this black uniform. Yes, they end up sometimes getting frustrated and hurting people, or in the case of Ian Tomlinson, getting frustrated and killing people. And for that, they should be punished, just like you would be punished or I would be punished in a court of law. So Ian Tomlinson died unnecessarily. And I feel really sorry for his kids and his family who have been trying to campaign for justice. But one thing I will not stand for is the mythology and the lies and the irrational hatred put forward towards people like myself for trying to bring you the truth. Anyway, to the 90 or so percent of people who appreciate what I do and who watch and who uh, make this a wonderful experience, thank you. Anyhow, in my absolute excitement to do this video, which ended up being a lot longer than I wanted to, um, I forgot to mention one thing. Part of the main argument against me by these irrational, hateful videos about Charlie Veach is lying about Ian Tomlinson is that I used the line in my BBC interview, and I quote, he was riddled with tattoos, and he was drunk. But I've mentioned the drunk in the main video. So anyway, the riddled with tattoos bit, um, exhibit A, in the comments, sorry, in the description box, I have posted a link to a photograph of Ian Tomlinson, and you can see the tattoos riddling his hands. And on the other hand, you can just about make out. And what he had on his knuckles, which is no evidence of anything, but he was riddled with tattoos. I'm sorry, guys. I've tried to show this to a few people on Facebook, but you're not interested in the truth. He had love and hate tattooed on his hands. And I hadn't actually seen that before in real life. I've seen it in cartoons. But he was riddled with tattoos. And I'm sorry, but that's the truth. That's not evidence of guilt. It's not evidence of protesterhood. It's not evidence of innocence. But it is the truth.